this girl. I was he, like, he keeps going, another thing I was happy about? Another thing I was happy about? Is there any girl that we've reviewed that I wouldn't use again? I, maybe it's me, because every time I'm like, I would use it again. We're Maddie and Kiki, Canada's favorite female grill masters. We've worked with some of the top barbecue brands in the industry, showcasing them on TV, at live demonstrations, and in our barbecue classes. Now, we're hunting down unique grills, old and new, to test if they're a grill master favorite or a grill master flop. The time has come for us to test the Traeger Ranger. So this grill is about $600 Canadian, and we tested it using what people typically make on a grill like this, good old burgers and sausages. You can't go wrong with some burgers and sausages. And we really wanted to see how much can this little grill actually hold. All right, honey, so let's kick it off with overall appearance. What did you think it looked like? I think this thing looked adorable. It basically looks like a ginormous briefcase. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's a heavy briefcase. Oh yeah, very heavy. It's about 60 pounds. I think it's heavier than it looks. It, I think it needs to come with one of those pull-up latches and a, an option for wheels on one side. Oh, yes! Like a rolling suitcase like you were going through an airport or something because I think the weight would discourage some people. You can see me trying to carry this thing, okay? <laughs> it looks like I'm trying to carry like 200 pounds. To me, it felt very heavy. It felt like it was 200 pounds. I was surprised to find out it's only 60 pounds, so I feel like when I was carrying it, if there was like other areas that I could like latch on to, I'd be fine. But you could see I was definitely not graceful with that thing. Yeah, I thought it was going down more times than one. <laughs> I thought I was going down too with it. Okay, but once we did get it up to where we were going to use it, it does look very rugged. I like the overall appearance of the outside, the nice ridges it had. I was very impressed with just the look alone so far. Okay, but I was surprised to find out this thing does not come in different colors. I think this thing would look sharp in orange, in a purple maybe, in a green. You guys are with me on that. I, Add some color to your life, everybody. I like the classic black. That's I'm a tried and true classic kind of girl. I think black is the way to go. Based on the pictures we saw of it online, I was surprised to see that it's actually bigger than it looks. Me too. I was picturing this thing to be teeny tiny. No, it's definitely, it does look a lot smaller when you're looking at pictures, but then you get it in front of you, you're lifting the lid, you're looking it around. It is bigger than it looks. The dimensions are 20 inches deep. 13 inches height and the width is 20 inches and three quarters. That's a lot of grill space. <laughs> All right, so moving right on to efficiency. Was this efficient, honey? It certainly was. I was actually very surprised that after two hours of using this thing, the hopper only was half empty. I didn't use a lot at all. No. So let's rewind a little bit. The hopper holds eight pounds of pellets, which to begin with, it does hold quite a bit for such a small little unit. I personally feel like the hopper should have been designed on the outside of the grill because it's kind of taking up a lot of, of the space on the inside of the grill where if it was on the outside like in the ironwood, you could use a lot more of that inside space for cook surface area. I see your point, but the whole beauty of using a small portable grill like this is that you're typically not cooking for like a million different people. Hence, you don't need so much cook space. I, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you either at all. But the other thing I was surprised at, once we got the unit going, the right clip started to get very hot. It really did get hot. But speaking of temperature, I could not get over the fact that, guys, it is, you can see from the look around today, it is freezing cold. I even had to wear my earmuffs. It's minus 13 out there today. And this thing did not fluctuate when it came to the temperature. You're right. The handle on the outside, the little clasp, it got super hot. So imagine on a day like today, it was freezing. Imagine in the middle of the summer, that thing yeah. would get like piping hot. That was one thing that we noticed. So if you are using it, that one side just gets hot. Just make sure to wear a glove. One question we did have was, does it sear? When it comes to pellet grilling, there's always talk about, can you grill hot and fast with it? Does it get grill marks? Does it get to that level of searing? And guys, we were so surprised to find out this thing does. It absolutely does. You'll notice in the sausages, they're not as prominent as we would have wanted them to be. But we think it's because it was so cold out today that every time we lifted the lid, it did cool down the grates like instantly. <laughs> That's definitely on us as the user uh, because 
we were shooting. We're shooting a video. So normally when it comes to smoking, you're going to have the lid up. You're going to do what you need to do, and you're going to slam that lid down. I was also really surprised that the underside of the table did not get hot. And I don't know maybe if that has to do with weather. I don't know how that would perform if it was a really, really hot day. But our table, you can see the table that we have is just basically a repurposed skid, and it did not get hot. So even if it was a plastic table, I think that you could probably cook on this thing with the plastic table. So the temperature ranges from 165 degrees Fahrenheit from to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, or because we're Canadian, 72 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius. Moving on to worth the price. We already said this thing costs $600. Honey, do you think it is worth the price? Yes, I do think it's worth the price. I think it's like the ironwood, like we've already mentioned, it's very similar to the ironwood performance-wise, but shrunken down into a tinier version. So I think if you don't have the space for the ironwood, if you're someone who's on the go all the time, definitely worth the price. And also for $600, it comes with the griddle. I absolutely love any kind of grill that comes with extra features that seems like it would be like as like an extra. I thought for sure that would be like a, maybe an $80 feature to add on or something, but it comes with the grill. I was very, very surprised at that. And so was I. We did put a cover on ours and it didn't come with the cover, obviously, like not many grills do come with the cover. But I don't see that the cover is mandatory here. If you're keeping this out on a condo balcony, yeah, you're going to want the cover to shield it from the weather. But if you're one of those RVer types, you're always on the road. Why would you cover it up? You're packing that thing to go, to go. so you don't really need the cover. I did enjoy that the cover looked like a large shower cap. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It totally did. It, that's exactly what it felt like to putting it on or it felt like the fitted bed sheet. <laughs> on okay, a very tiny this bed. Thing, you can fold. I don't know how the people fold fitted bed sheets. This is what I do. Yeah, me too. Away. Me too. This thing looks like you could go like that, put it away. Yeah. What about happiness vibe? Okay, I felt very happy using this thing. I had fun seeing that despite what many people think, you can achieve awesome grill marks using this grill. We hear it all the time. The charcoal people versus the pellet people, they're like, you can't see or you can't get grill marks on a pellet grill. This thing proves those people wrong. But there's one huge thing that I have an issue with here that caused me to have a little bit of a dwindle factor on this. What? Why is it that the pellet grill scientists out there haven't developed a little latch for cleaning the thing? At the end of a cook, you are left with the ash from the pellets, from the spent pellets. Why isn't that there's just like a little lash that you could just undo, bust the pellet dust into there, and you you would clean it up? But no, you have to get out the back. You gotta like vacuum that up. You gotta talk to some pellet people out there and get them to develop a little lash for us. I don't find that to be that much of a. I hate a clean up. I did really like the keep warm setting. That made me very happy. I thought that was a really cool feature. Why? Because maybe because you wanted to keep warm out there. I, it I did. It's not keeping warm the griller. It's the grill. <laughs> I wanted to toast my own buns. <laughs> okay, I'm sure people are wondering. Did it get? Did the food get a smoke ring? Yes, it did. So under happiness vibe, yes, that did make me very happy to see that it did absolutely produce a smoke ring. And I was surprised to see that with sausages that had been on there for such a little amount of time. Another question I think people are wondering: How much food fits on it? We got on six burgers and five sausages. That is quite a bit of food for a grill that looks like a tiny suitcase. Totally, and I think that we even could have doubled the amount of sausages. Yes. We had them pretty spaced out. I'd say you could probably get up to 10 on there easily. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was really happy about. You were very happy using this grill. I was really. He, he keeps going, another thing I was happy about? Another thing I was happy about? The important thing when it comes to barbecuing is whether or not the food tastes good. So honey, what did the food taste like? I was actually very surprised at how smoky the food tasted after only being on for a very short period of time. The sausages had a delicious smoky flavor. Not too smoky though, because I feel like that can turn a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. It was a perfect amount of smoke and same with the burger. It was the burger tasted because it was made on a griddle. It tasted like a flat top burger, but like a wood fired flat top burger. So it was like the best of both worlds. Usually people are like, what do you like better? Like a grilled burger or flat top burger? This one like combined the flavors of both. Ooh. All right, you keep saying, you're happy, you're happy, I'm so happy, I love it. I think I know if you'd use it again. Is there any grill that we've reviewed <laughs> that I wouldn't use again? I, maybe it's me, because every time I'm like, I would use it again. Look, the girl likes to grill. <laughs> 
So yes, I definitely would use it again. And I would recommend it to anybody out there who has an RV, maybe they have a condo, somewhere that where they don't want to take up a lot of space, but they want that smoke flavor in something that is very user friendly, very simple to operate. And most importantly, like we said, makes delicious food. Agreed. It all comes down to that. I would clearly use it again. I had a blast with this thing, but I really would like someone to change the oh, here cleaning. We go. So I'm sorry. It needs to be changed. The cleaning process. Or can someone just come over and help me? It's like a tablespoon of dust. You can't get that out. Clean it up for me then. Oh, my <laughs> Thanks for watching, Barbecue Family. And if you're still here watching our videos, we appreciate you guys. We love you so much. Leave a burger emoji in the comments below to let us know you're still here. And speaking of burgers, if you want to see how we make charcoal grilled burgers, click the next video. That one gets me drooling every single time. Who does not love a good burger?